Hello everybody and welcome to the TasteBetter.com video newsletter for Monday, February 1st, 2010. Happy February everybody. I hope you guys had a great week. Last week was a little slow for us. Uh, Monday started off really great, really exciting, and then some kind of uh, virus started to uh, get into the house and a, uh, a cold is going around. And for those of you that are keeping track, yes, that is the second illness in two months. And I wasn't too happy about that. But uh, you know what? I ended up doing some research into nutrition and immune function that I'm really uh, starting to learn a bit out of. And I don't have anything to share there yet, but I'm really proud that I managed to find some good in a situation that, uh, you know, an earlier version of me would have just complained about and used it as an excuse for why a bunch of stuff didn't happen. And uh, so I turned that around, you know, that whole lemons into lemonade, uh, whatever. But uh, that was good for me, so I was really happy about that. And what about you guys? You know, has something happened in your life recently that you found you're dealing with it in a different or more positive way? Uh, if so, let me know. I'd like to hear your stories. And if not, please give it a try. It's... Uh, it's good to try new things, let's put it that way. Uh, this week, uh, we of course, as always, want to welcome our new subscribers. Uh, we saw Megan, Christabel, Angela, Daryl, and Al join up. Uh, thanks so much, guys. I hope you get a lot of value out of this. And uh, if you have any feedback or questions, uh, please let me know. You can just get a hold of me at jason at tastebetter.com or on the tastebetter.com contact form. And that goes for anyone else who's watching as well. Please uh, let me know what you think. And if you have any ideas on how to make this even more valuable to you, uh, by all means, let me know. This week, we are going to be talking about letters uh, because it was a joke that became reality, but I'm happy about it. Also, we're going to be getting ready for Codename Sim. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. And we've got some new ways to subscribe uh, in addition to our existing stuff like the YouTube videos that I want to share. Then we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up and wrap things up. So, last week, during office hours, I made a joke about uh, the previous week we talked about stories, and uh, last week we talked about the power of words, so I, I said we were going to do letters next, and maybe vowels, and uh, go down from there into uh, punctuation marks, or something like that, uh, and it was kind of a joke, but then it, it kind of stuck, so I ended up uh, thinking about letters this week, and uh, in letters I'm thinking about the kind that you write, uh, primarily to companies and government officials about how their actions align with your values. And it seems to me like such an easy way to make your feelings known and to raise awareness and to grow your network that, you know, on the surface, I'd think it'd be the number one activity for anyone looking to spread the word about the stuff they care about. And at the same time, you know, I must send maybe three letters out a year. And usually most of those are because somebody has told me to, like it's part of a larger campaign and say, please, you know, voice your support. And I, I don't want to do it. It just, it's, it's outside of my comfort zone. And I don't think I'm the only one like that. So I spent some of the weekend thinking about it. And one of the things that came out of that was I think that there's a tendency to lump letters into uh, one big grouping of uh, just letters as a whole, and I think there's a lot of different ways that you can get in touch with people, and I, I just want to go through those a bit to maybe spark your imagination and uh, get you some uh, ideas on new ways that you can be active. Um, the first one is obvious, and that's the complaint letter. It's the kind that the majority of people, when you think about letter writing, uh, that's what the majority of people tend to think. Uh, you know, I'm writing a letter to complain about something. Uh, I had bad service, uh, this product sucks, how can you be so cruel, uh, those kinds of things. And it's important to let people know when you're not happy because people hate to lose a customer or a voter or things like that. Uh, but, you know, if you're not comfortable with complaining, uh, there's a lot of other ways to promote your ideas through letters, and that's what some of these other ways are. So the next one that doesn't always come to mind is the question. Um, some of you might know that our vegan alcohol site at barnivore.com relies on readers to uh, get in touch with companies they care about that uh, make drinks, ask them a question or two about their manufacturing methods, and then forward the response on to us. And without fail, at least once a month, a company will be hit with the same question from multiple people. And they'll, they'll comment on it. They'll say, like, I've been working here for 15 years and nobody's ever asked that until this month. Do you know John or Sue? And just asking companies what's in their products or if they have plans to introduce different products that would be more appealing to you can do a lot to raise awareness, especially with smaller companies. You know, often the reason something's done a certain way is just because nobody's ever suggested something different. 
Next up, we've got the statement. And this one, instead of like a letter to a company or a government office, uh, I'm thinking about you know letters to the local newspaper, you know, letters to the editor. Uh, all you have to do is just read a, an issue of the paper or find an article that has something to do with things you care about and craft a short response. I haven't done this in a long time, but uh, I have had letters published before. And I got to say, it's kind of cool to see your name in print. So that's something you might not have thought about uh, before. Uh, lastly, and it's unfortunate that this comes up last because I, I think it's one of the more important types of letters is the letter of praise. Uh, I'm a good fan of uh, rewarding behaviors instead of punishing the bad behaviors. But the fact is, you know, we as a species, we tend towards complaining. If we take action, it's to complain. And, you know, but at the same time, that just makes it all the more powerful that a letter of praise, you know, if you, somebody gets a letter saying, hey, I had a really good meal last night, like at their restaurant, or thanks for making this product, it really brightens my day, that can have a huge impact. And if you think about it, what kind of notes make it onto the fridge door or the cubicle wall? Uh, you know, notes of praise generally do, and they're great tools as well if you're uh, someone who takes to practice gratitude and acknowledgement. So... That's just a quick look at different kinds of letters, just to kind of break it up a little bit, so maybe there's something in there that you will uh, attach to. And let me know if you actually send letters on a regular basis or not, and, and why or why not. Uh, just jason at tastebetter.com. For me, this month I'm going to try and send four letters out, just one a week. I don't know what they're going to be yet, who they're to, but I want to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, so that's something I'm going to give a try. And, uh, you know, physical letters versus email... I think these days both of them are good, but uh, physical letters, I would lean towards the praise ones on that uh, because those are the ones that even people are going to pin up and they're going to last a lot longer. So give that a try. Next up, we are getting ready for SIM. Uh, this is just a quick little announcement on our side. Uh, I talk about this more in the actual newsletter, but in the interest of time, uh, the rumors are true and we are expecting our first child in June, uh, which might answer why we're doing things like uh, spawnbetter.com, our vegan parenting site. Uh, so we've been told it's going to be a boy, and we don't have a name picked out, uh, so we've been going with codename Sim, which is short for Symbiote. And Angela's doing really well, and i got to say, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky to have someone who's able to keep things so together in the midst of all these big changes. Uh, basically, for the next four months, because June is coming really, really quick, uh, I'm going to be working more on this kind of stuff, more on Taste Better, more on things in the B Better network of sites. Uh, I mentioned this in office hours a little while ago, but this is basically my full-time gig right now. And I'm not desperate, I'm not worried, I'm not afraid. I want to make a world that Sim is going to be happy to live in and Sim's going to be proud of me for making a part of. And I want to work with you guys to do that. Uh, so if you can just keep some positive thoughts in your subconsciousness for us, uh, I'd really appreciate it because I think this is going to be a fantastic year. And I got to say, Sim is amazing. I felt a kick the other day. It was so much fun. Uh, so you're going to hear more about that as time goes on. But I just wanted to let you guys know because these notes, there's a lot of personal stuff in here too because uh, we're people and we talk to each other. And uh, I've learned a lot and met a lot of you online and I uh, really enjoy and appreciate those connections. So I just wanted to share that. Next up, we have some new ways to subscribe. If you like these things, I mean, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just hit the subscribe button and you're going to get an email. But if you'd like to watch these on your uh, mobile device or get the audio to your MP3 player, uh, we've got some podcast feeds. They're not in iTunes yet because they're having some kind of a technical problem. But uh, if you get the newsletter, the email version of the newsletter, please uh, check that and the links are in there if you want to subscribe and have that pulled down automatically. Assuming this means anything to you, it's a slightly more technical approach. Uh, if you'd like to know more about it, just get in touch and we can uh, go through that. And this week, we're going to just continue what we're doing, basically. The last week with the cold, I didn't get through as much as I wanted. We hit most of our targets. So that was good. But uh, really happy with the post that went on Taste Better this morning. Uh, vegan porn is just going to stay goofy. Barnivore got some new filters last week, and it's just going to keep getting updated. And Spawn Better, this week we're going to talk about the anti-population crowd and what happens when they uh, judge your choices to have children. And that is pretty much it for the newsletter. There's only so much I can fit into 10 minutes, so I encourage you to check out the uh, email version or the audio version uh, if that works for you. 
and uh, to find out some more information. And please get in touch. If you'd like to find out more from us, you can get a hold of us through Twitter at twitter.com slash taste better. Big fan of the Facebook page. Please give that a try. Facebook.com slash taste better. And of course on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash taste better. As always, you can reach me at jason at tastebetter.com or at tastebetter.com through the contact form. Thanks so much. And we will see you next week.